Welcome back to our weekly news program, The Voice of East Turkestan, established by the exiled East Turkestan government. China is forcibly relocating the people of East Turkestan into other Chinese provinces. Family members of detainees are demanding to go to East Turkestan with independent investigators. China issued a white paper on the employment and labor rights in Xinjiang. At least eight Mongolians were dead by suicide amid language protests. China is collecting data from foreigners and recording them. The United States plans to sell seven major weapons to Taiwan. Recently, videos have appeared on social media in which the Chinese communist regime is sending Uyghur youth as well as the elderly people to leave their homes in large numbers and transport them from East Turkestan as slave workers despite the increase of the Chinese virus. These videos show the suffering of girls, boys, and the elderly with their tearful eyes as they are forced to leave their homeland wearing masks to ward off the Chinese virus. The United States and other democratic countries have criticized the Chinese communist regime, which is upholding a genocide against the people of East Turkestan and for exploiting Uyghurs as forced laborers illegally while they are imposing sanctions on the illegal goods they produce. They said that China will not be able to hide its harmful nature in front of the international community anymore. Among the relatives of the victims of the Chinese detention camps residing in Turkey, in a video clip, they said that they're always ready to go with the European Union investigators to East Turkestan. During the virtual European Union summit that was held on September 14th, the European Union stressed that Beijing should respect human rights and that human rights are one of the basic requirements in the relations between the EU and China. At the meeting, European leaders asked the Chinese Secretary General Xi Jinping to allow independent international investigators to conduct investigations in East Turkestan. At a press conference on September 15th, the Chinese spokesperson of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Wang Wenbin, said in a response to a question from AFP that the European Union could carry out an independent investigation in East Turkestan. Uyghurs in exile, who have been completely cut off from their relatives, are trying to make their voices heard all over the world after the Chinese government launched a widespread crackdown on the internment camp system in East Turkestan. The families of the victims of the concentration camps gathered in Turkey on September 16 and issued a video statement in which they said that they were ready to go with the independent European Union investigators to Turkestan and demanded the release strongly. The International Office of the Chinese National Council released a white paper on the employment and labor rights in Xinjiang on Thursday. The public opinion suggested that this was a response to the recent U.S. ban on some products from East Turkestan. It stated in the white paper that between 2014 and 2019, the total number of workers in Xinjiang rose from 11.35 to 13.3 million an increase of nearly 20%. And the per capita income of local urban residents increased from 23,200 to 34,700. It showed that Xinjiang always respected the aspirations of workers, formulated employment policies, and made them an important basis for pre-employment training, effectively guaranteeing their equal rights to jobs, wages, vacations, job security, freedom of religion, and the right to speak and write in their own language. It affirmed that the state has effectively set international work and human rights standards and said that a solid foundation has been established for the higher and broader realization of the right to life and development. Recently, several international media and research institutes revealed that many Uyghurs from East Turkestan are forced to work and that they are being sent directly from the Chinese concentration camps. The U.S. Customs and Border Protection relied on a temporary detention order on Monday, which prohibits the import of cotton, clothing, electronic components, and other products from four Chinese companies because they are produced from factories that employ forced labor.
The Chinese Communist Party imposes a new educational policy in southern Mongolia, as Chinese language lessons start from the first grade of primary school and plans to replace Mongolian language lessons with Chinese in the next two years, which arouses South Mongolia's dismissy. It is reported that at least eight Mongolians committed suicide without wanting to abandon their language. Chinese authorities have misused the name bilingual education to launch a plan to implement teaching in the Chinese language instead of Mongolian lessons in schools at all levels in southern Mongolia since September, sparking widespread protests and strikes by the Mongolians. Despite the severe repression and arrest by the Chinese authorities, tens of thousands of people still chant slogans as protect the Mongolian language and stop the policy of assimilation. Some netizens say that China has taken strict measures against the protests of the Mongolian people and that Mongolian children should be sent to the schools within three days. Otherwise, local officials will be reviewed at the grassroots level, excluding unqualified school principals and canceling promotions, legal punishments for students' parents, canceling students' registrations, and dismissing their parents from government work. China is using malicious means, such as stopping lending to herders and eliminating living allowances for the disabled. Inhi Batu, director of human rights in southern Mongolia, said the Chinese local government had deployed police in the pastoral area, forcing students to go to school and even kidnapping children. Mongolia sees it as a second cultural revolution or a second massacre as eight Mongolians committed suicide for trying to preserve their mother tongue. Some of the mothers and fathers, who are reluctant to adhere to China's policies, are hiding in the desert. According to Apple Daily, a high school principal in southern Mongolia was fired, unwilling to expel students from the school, and later committed suicide due to China's unjust policies and repression against the Mongols. The Mongols signed a joint statement on the White House website, calling on the outside world to support them and urged Washington to prevent the Chinese Communist Party from destroying the Mongolian language and culture by eliminating the teaching of the Mongolian language in schools and preventing the assimilation and disappearance of the nation. The technology company of the Communist Party of China, which is affiliated with military and intelligence agencies in Beijing, has secretly collected the personal information of millions of people in the United States, the United Kingdom, Australia, Canada, India, and Japan. The Australian Financial Review said on September 13 that the company, whose main clients were the Chinese military, had been named Shenzhen Jianhua Data Company which used classified data from the Chinese intelligence services and the Department of Homeland Security. The company's database collects the personal information of about 2.4 million foreigners. The company's database collects the personal information of about 2.4 million foreigners, and China has described the information of 250,000 individuals through passwords. Of these, there are 52,000 Americans, 40,000 British, 35,000 Australians, more than 10,000 Indians and 5,000 Canadians. Many of them are high-ranking politicians, members of the royal family, religious leaders, military generals, and other celebrities. China put a number on all of these people. Details of this personal information include the date of birth, address, marital status, family members, relatives, political associations, social relations, and social media identifiers, most of which are taken from social media and other public materials on the internet, but some data has been stolen from web records and applications, jobs and archives from documents and obtained through dark websites. Professor Christopher Balding, an American scientist and cybersecurity expert who came across the data for the first time, said that when he began researching Huawei data operations last year, someone had mistakenly sent him a huge data message from the previous company. According to what Balding said, this huge discovery is similar to the discovery of the Holy Grail, and we understood the amount of Chinese investment in the media and its influence is still in its infancy, and that what China is doing represents a great threat and that it must be controlled domestically and internationally, not only affected by its own citizens but also by the citizens of the world, 
and that it intends to establish a state of mass surveillance. According to what four people familiar with the situation said, as the Trump administration continues to put pressure on China, the U.S. authorities wanted to sell seven major weapons systems to Taiwan, including water mines, crews, missiles, and drones. The United States sells seven weapons simultaneously to Taiwan in a rare violation of a long-standing treaty. In the past, U.S. arms sales to Taiwan were always fragmented and carefully planned to reduce tensions with the Chinese government. This year, the Trump administration's stance on China has intensified, with arms sales at their lowest in decades in the Sino-U.S. relations. Meanwhile, Tsai Ing-wen was re-elected to the presidency in January this year, strengthening and accelerating Taiwan's arms purchases after making it important to bolster Taiwan's defense forces. Thank you for watching us today and see you next week.